Ah, the events in progress pattern. This pattern has a broad application. So just one thing, this deals with um, any event that has a start date and an end date. And it's basically the distinguish, distinguishing, distinguishing between events that are in progress and events that have finished. So to give you an example, um, uh, order dates. So when you have an order, you have a sale. On that order date, that order is not, uh, is not yet delivered. Three days later, the order is delivered. In, within that period until it's delivered, it is in progress. Once it is delivered, then the deal, the order is completed. So let's quickly look at some theory around that. So let's say, for instance, we have all of these orders in play. Let's say at a specific point in time, let's say we are right here, right now, that time. We are at this time over here. So at this time, order one is already delivered, but at this time, Order two and order three are both open. So order two, not delivered yet. Order three, not delivered yet, but ordered, yes. This one is concluded and these have not even been delivered or ordered yet. Okay, so now let's just take it a little bit further. Let's take a situation where we're looking at orders over a period of time. So within this window period, if I look at all the orders that are open, I would say order two is open within this period. Order three um, was open and closed within this period, but I still see order three as being open within this period range. And then order four obviously is also open within this period. Okay, so order three is the big one that's included as being open, even though it's delivered at the end of the period. So now that we know that, let's quickly look at the data model I'm going to be working with here. So in here, you can basically see we have the orders over here. The orders link to the dates table. The first one is the order date, links to the dates table with the order date. And then the second one is I link to the dates table with the delivery date. So we got one inactive relationship to the date, uh, the delivery date, and then we have one active relationship with the order date. And then we can see we're relating to the products, we're relating to the customers. Okay, just another thing I want to show you. This is very important for your pattern. And also, like, depending on what your data looks like, you might have a different thing in there. So you can see here, in my order table, you can see one order ID appears multiple times. So in the order table, I actually have the order line items. This is very important because that's going to determine how I create my measures. Okay, cool. So the very first thing I want to bring in here, so I'm just going to start this little matrix table here with the, you can see it's the year and the month and the day in there. What I want to do is I want to see all of the orders that I've received. So the measure here is very simple. Orders received, distinct count, order ID. Remember, I'm doing a distinct count because I got more, I got multiple order lines for the same order in the table. So I do a distinct count on the order ID. If there is if there's one row for each order in the table, then you can use count rows. But um, in my case, I use the distinct count. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to bring it in there. Let's say values. Cool. So I can see the number of orders received within each of these periods, within each of these months. Okay, cool. Now that I know that, I want to look at let's actually bring the dates in here as well let's bring the day in here so we can see in an individual day what was ordered okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to bring in the orders delivered first thing let's quickly see i'm going to say new measure say new measure paste it in here i'm just going to call it one so basically what we have here is we're saying calculate do a distinct count, okay, because, because of my order tables um, design, but using the relationship delivery date, date delivery. Okay, cool. So I'm going to bring that in. So if I drag that in there, I see immediately I have a little issue over here. You see I have that blank that blank line over there so this is because i just want to kind of show you how this table is configured that i have some delivery dates that are blank so if a thing hasn't been delivered it will just have a blank so i need to get rid of those blanks there so i'm going to modify this measure a little bit so what i'll do is 
Um, I'm actually going to just show you what I'll do in this case. So I'm going to create a different measure. I'm going to create an alternative to that measure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it over here. Let's just do this. So what I do is I basically declare a variable saying what is the current delivery date. I just take the max of the delivery date. And then I stick it through. I would have declare my variable as a result, calculate the distinct count using this relationship. And then I basically say, if this is not blank delivery date, then return the result. So if I do that, we're not going to have that little blank over there. So what we're going to do next is we're going to create the measure to um, find all of the open orders. So basically finding all of the open orders in this period. So basically what I'm saying is um, for open period, let's say my filter periods there at the min date and max date there. I basically want to say order two, three, and four should all be seen as open within that. How do I do that? Let's quickly see. So let's go back here. I'm going to quickly paste the code in here. Let's say new measures. We say new measure. We just paste the measure in there. So first thing we do is we declare a min date and we declare a max date. Cool. What we're going to do now is we're going to step through this quickly. We're going to say calculate, do a distinct count of orders. Um, I'm doing this because of my order table configuration. But then I'm saying anything where the max date is bigger than the order date. So what I'm saying is the max date is bigger than the order date. So this would be this one, this one, this one, this one. Yes. But so this one is excluded. And where delivery date is bigger than the min date. Delivery date is bigger than the min date. Okay, so this one is excluded because that one is included. This one is included because it's there. This one is included. So basically, this one is disqualified and that one is disqualified. So what I'm saying is with this measure over here, this is going to pick up anything in that window. And then I just like put remove filters in here because it's required to just filter out any um, other filters that might be on your date table. Okay, so once I have that, I'm going to drag that in. Open number of orders. This will actually give you the open orders within that period. So you can see for the month of July, there was 22 open orders. And if you look at the logic here, one, two, that hasn't been delivered yet. So two, 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 we add two, there's four, five, um, and then we add one at six, but then one is delivered. So it's back to five. So you can see that just loops through the month. Okay, cool. So now that we know all the open orders within that period, let's now look at the open orders at the end of the period. So what we want to do is, if we look at this, I want to say, show me all the open orders at the max date there. Okay, at that specific one. So I want to say, um, at this, at that stage, the only open order is order four. Two, three, one, and five, all excluded. How do we do that? Okay, that's actually quite a simple one. All we're going to do is, we're going to refer to the open orders we created in the previous step. We're just going to add a uh, last date. This is how this will look. So EOP, end of period, we're basically saying calculate of the open orders all, so basically of all of that, just give me the last date. Just give it as at the last date. And that will give you exactly what we need. Isn't that cool? So I'm just going to drag that in. There. So here you can see that's the actual open orders at the end of each period. See, it follows the other one during the month, but at the end of the month, you can see the actual the actual open orders of that here is not 22, but it's actually five. How cool is that? Okay. And now let's quickly get the average, the average open orders. That's important to have. So we can see the average number of open orders we have at the end of a period. Quickly say. Also very simple, we're just saying average x, it's a scalar function of the date and we're going to apply it across all open orders. So basically 
for this period, this open period over there that we declared, um, what is the average um, open orders, number of open orders? Yes, and we have that now. And we're just going to drag that in. That's an important measure to have because over time that should get less, you know? Or you should try and manage that. How cool is that? That's so cool. Okay, now heading to the last little stretch. So now that we've actually done everything needed for the events in progress, I'm going to show now to apply that to sales amounts. So basically, just take your attention to this table over here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically show you how to quickly create the sales. Um, let's quickly do the sales delivered. So this is basically exact copies of the other measures we created. But the only difference is we're going to substitute the count rows or the distinct count with sales. So now we can say, cool. Sales delivered. Let's drag that in there. Sales delivered. So you can see that's the total sales we have for the month. But the total sales delivered is a portion of that, as you can see. Okay, cool. And now let's do all the open order sales within the month. Uh, once again, same as the measure we created for counting the orders, but all we're going to do now is just add the total sales um, expression we already have. See, it's exactly the same logic. So that's going to be a massive amount. It's not necessarily of any value to us. Did it save? Yes, it did. And let's drag it in there. See, so that's I don't like that one because it's a little bit more than actual sales because it's for all those orders within that period. Um, and then the last one is this one is more makes more sense the end of period sales. And let's just drag that in there as well. See, that one makes sense. So, the open orders at the end of the period. Okay. And then just do the last one, which is the average. And then we've covered everything with events in progress, simple events in progress. And that gives you your average um, open orders in terms of sales amount for each month. You know, you want to keep that down to a minimum. Okay, go. Cool. So if we quickly look at the second page over here, you know, some of the handy insights you can get from this is know, knowing your averages, and you can see over time how your open orders um, reflect at the end of each period. It can actually help you quite a lot um, with actually planning your working capital requirements for actually um, sustaining your business. So if you know it costs you ten thousand. Um, you, at any given time, you have ten thousand dollars worth of um, work in progress or stock in progress. Then you need to make sure you have that money up front because you only collect the sales once things are actually delivered. So um, yeah, hope that made a lot of sense. I'm going to make another one of the uh, of these next. Uh, will be a little bit more detailed. Will be on snapshots for events in progress. Cheers.